Hello and welcome to my channel, Cross by Floss. I am Lisa and this is Floss Tube number 20. Yes, I am a week late. Um, I should have had a video up last weekend, which is my normal two week schedule, but I just was not feeling great. It was Mother's Day weekend last weekend, as well as the Little's ninth birthday. And um, I wasn't feeling good. I was sick last week a couple of days from work and then this week I still wasn't feeling a hundred percent and so I just didn't get a video up until this weekend so I'm sorry um but I have lots to talk about so let's get into it okay so last weekend was the little's birthday she turned nine my granddaughter and she turned nine on the ninth which is a special birthday. What we do in our family is, you know, um, the day that you turn on the, the year that you turn on the day that you were born. So if you were the 20th on the 20th or, um, you know, ninth on the ninth, it's a special day because it will never happen again. And, um, and so because of coronavirus, which is really cramping her style and it's all about her. Yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, she wasn't able to have a party with her friends and we weren't able to go out for her birthday, but we made it as special as possible. Um, we still follow the tradition, what we do for her since she was like, I don't even remember how old she was, but, um, we started like filling her room with balloons and decorating it while she slept. So when she woke up on her birthday, she had this room full of goodness. And, um, and so we were still able to do that because Grammy went to dollar store, dollar tree the day before and picked up oh so much stuff. And, um, and uh, yeah, so anyways, and she was thrilled. She um, got a computer for her birthday. Uh, she games, she, she plays Minecraft and uh, Planet Zoo. We haven't gotten into Animal Crossing with her yet. Um, I'm sure it's coming, but uh, she loves Planet Zoo and Minecraft and she's great at both. And um, you know, your iPad just can't handle the switch can't handle the things that she wants to do on a computer. So she got a laptop for her birthday. So anyways, um, so we're having a few learning curves on the rules about having a laptop. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's been fun. And then of course, Mother's Day, I hope all of you who are moms, grandmas, aunts, you know, care for a fur, fur baby, uh, little, um, are in any way, shape or form recognized as somebody special in a little's life. Um, I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful day. Mine was nice. My kids are, they're sweet. They're very sweet. And we got takeout and that was lovely. So, um, what else has happened? Okay, so uh, I had sold Mr. G's house on his birthday in April, April 10th. We had, you know, an offer, accepted an offer, sale pending. Well, the sale fell through and like three weeks in. <laughs> and um, mainly because PSA, when you go to get your pre-approval, don't do anything to mess up your credit in the meantime. So unfortunately, the buyer had decided to co-sign on a loan, I guess, a car loan for a family member. And that family member did not get gap insurance, had an accident, and yeah. So anyways, I guess his credit took quite a hit and could no longer be pre-approved for the amount that they originally had. And so that, that deal fell through. It's all worked out because we got the house up right away again as a new listing and um, put it up for a little more than what we originally had. And uh, it sold again the next day. And this time I made sure <laughs> that these people are spot on. And so the closing is now in June instead of May, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so yay for that. And then um, uh, what else has happened? Uh, um, oh, so I sold a house and my daughter bought a house. I'm so proud of her. Her and her boyfriend have been together for quite a long time. They've known each other since junior high. They've not dated since junior high, but on and off. And um, 
So anyways, my daughter is 26 and he is 28 and they just bought their first house. And uh, they, it's been funny because they've been kind of looking, they did, you know, their pre-approval and they've been looking, but they weren't serious because neither one of them are is in a hurry to move out, which is the best time to buy a house, right? Like you're not in any hurry to move out of a house, to get into a house or break your lease or whatever. My daughter lives at home and, um, and he has a lease with friends. And, um, and so, you know, neither one of them were in a hurry and they were just kind of like slow mowing, seeing what the market's like. And of course, with every, uh, a huge amount of the, uh, Washington in Washington, I'm sure it's in other States as well, but I can only speak to Washington. Our unemployment rate is, I mean, the claims for unemployment are just through the roof. And, you know, so a lot of people are without jobs right now and houses are going up for sale. And there's some construction issues in Washington state as well that is making it, um, homeowners are very uh, unhappy about and so are trying to leave their homes and that kind of thing. And um, and so, you know, the house, pre the house market is now starting to see some great homes in their price range going up. And they've been looking and they've been touring some homes and, you know, everyone that we've and you know, because it's coronavirus, you can only one person at a time can go through the house with the realtor. And, um, and so that's been kind of an experience. So, you know, we, we do the view online, look online. And, um, so, you know, all the homes that she would show me, I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's cute, but I don't know, I don't see it. And so Thursday morning, I think Thursday morning, she, uh, sent me or she called me from work and she said, this house just came up at like midnight this morning and um, and it looks really good. And I think we're gonna go in and look at it tonight. And I'm like, oh cool, what's the address? You know, look it up. And I'm like, ooh, and as soon as I saw the front door, you guys, I was like, oh, this is really cute. And I'm going through the pictures and I'm like, ooh, this has a lot of potential, this is really cute. I think this could be it, And You know, like this is really cute. It marks, it ticks off all their boxes, the whole deal, right? So they go and have a look. They called me right after they, and they took the little, and this is the first time they've taken the little to go see a house as well. And so she got to go through first with the realtor and took up most of their time slot. And, um, yeah, cause she talks a lot, just like a granny and her mom. And anyways, uh, yeah, it was very cute. And, uh, so long story short, they put an offer in and it was accepted the next day, 24 hours later. It was the longest 24 hours of our lives trying to, you know, cause they did have a couple of offers, but, um, again, because my daughter and her boyfriend are in no hurry and they, the sellers want a, a rent back. And so they made it very enticing for them. So yay for her. I'm excited and I'm a little sad because my daughter and I have a really great relationship and um, her and I have, you know, been through the teenage mom and uh, the grandbaby and, you know, raising her and just always being together. And uh, it's not uncommon for my daughter to come up and, and, you know, snuggle in my bed with the little and watch TV and have heart to heart talks. And not that I think that those things will go away, but it will change. And, um, so a little sad, but then on the other hand, I get a craft room, you guys. So I'm a little excited about that. And it also helps, you know, with me moving to Arizona in the near future as well. So, um, you know, she was one of my big concerns of like, where does she go, you know, in the meantime. So now that they bought a house, that answer is, or that question's answered. Okay. Uh, what else have I got uh, going on? Okay, how about we get into whips? Because I have quite a few of them. Um, I finished out April and my birthday, my birthday sell. So it was All Hallows April. All Hallows April birthday sell. I think it was All Hallows April sell. I think is what I did. And it was my birthday sell. So anyways, uh, let's finish out those whips and show you what I got. Okay. So, um, I think the 27th, 20, 27th, 28th, 
29th, 30th, yes. So I ended up getting, out of the 30 days, I ended up doing 29 patterns. I was not feeling good on Monday and I just couldn't get it done. So I didn't get all 30, but that's okay because <laughs> 29 is pretty darn good. So on the 20 or the 27th one that I have is from the Witchy Stitcher. And it's this pattern here and it's just called uh, I Am Halloween. Super cute. I just did it on this 14 count white Ada. And I just have the start of the portrait up here done. Um, super cute. I, you know, it's like three colors, three, four colors. And I think she uses, she likes to use a twill in her. Oh, maybe this one doesn't have it. I think it does. I think it uses black and orange a twill, possibly. I, I can't find it right now. So, um, but I'm pretty sure it does. And so that pattern's just gonna be, it's just fun. I really like her patterns. They're, they're PDFs. Um, they're very easy to read and um, great patterns. Okay, and then the 28th pattern I have was, oh, this, I could not wait to start this one. I've had this one in my stash for a couple of years. Um, it is Celebrate Halloween by Madame Chantilly. I love this. I love all of her seasons. I, I want them all. I want the July one or Celebrate. I think it's called Celebrate. Next, Celebrate July, maybe? I don't know. Um, but I would like that one, um, next because it's gorgeous. So this one I did on a 16 count. I have to look at my notes. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, 16 count Ada. And I started in the bottom, which is extremely uncharacteristic of me because, oh, <laughs> Halloween. So I started with Halloween mostly because, so I normally start in the top left of a pattern. But if you look at this pattern, there is nothing in the top left. I could have started in the middle and started working myself up, but I decided to start down in the bottom, bottom left, and, um, and work the words, and then I'll work my way up. Um, yeah, there are a lot of colors in this puppy. There's two, four, six, oh, eight colors in this, eight, nine colors. Um, but they're super beautiful and I am super, I don't even know where they are, um, super happy working on it. Plus the only color that I could pull at the time was 3371 and, um, because my floss is being used in so many other projects. Okay. Then, Ooh, this next one, um, another witch, the witchy stitcher pattern. And it is Ouija, Ouija Halloween. Oh, I so love this pattern. And this one also calls for, I'm pretty sure that this one also has a twill. No, this one does not have a twill. Um, I am doing it on a black Ada that is collecting every dog hair in this house. Um, it is a massively stiff, <laughs> it is like cardboard Ada. I am stitching this in hand and, um, with the warmth of your hand, it does eventually start softening up. Um, and, but this is all I got done on that. It's just the top row and started in a corner and working my way down. Um, and again, just a 14 count black Ada. Um, seriously, every dog hair. I have one dog, Odin, who is a Mastiff Dane mix. Um, and we have his sister as well, Rhea. Um, he is a shedder. He has very short hair, but I swear he sheds a dog every time he walks. So that's a lot of fun. And it catches on all of my fabric. And now I'm not only weaving my own hair into it, but now his. Um, okay, and then the last Halloween pattern I did was from the Prairie Schooler, just one of these little teeny tiny ones. 
And these are just cards. I think they used to be like something free that they gave in a kit, possibly. I don't know. And um, and now people are putting them together and selling them as a pack you, at different seasons, which is cool. So that you can, you know, find the ones that you like. And I have found a bunch of pattern Halloween ones, little ones, which are awesome because they don't turn out very big at all. Um, so this is what I got done on these. And the great thing about these two is that there's two to three colors max, which is fantastic. I think this one has three colors. So um, that's what I got done on that. So that ends All Hallows April Sal. And I now have 29 Halloween whips just from April that have been added to my my whip pile. I'm not overwhelmed at all. No, because then we get into mania, 2020 mania. So my mania plans were on the weekends. Seriously, it's like you get on floss tube and you get floss tube face, like it's itchy floss tube face. Your nose starts itchy. It doesn't happen any other time. Okay, maybe I lie. It does, not as frequent. Anyway, um, floss tube face, I'm gonna, I've just coined a phrase. Um, <laughs> but every time you get on, all of a sudden my eyebrow starts itching, my nose is itching, my hair, I, what is happening? Anyways, okay, back to Mania. Um, Mania 2020, my plans were that on the weekends I was going to do a sampler. And then during the week, it was Mirabilia. I start Mirabilia Monday and then for five days I work on Mirabilia with a few exceptions, which I will get into. But I think for this working out the next little while, um, I think I followed, I think I followed it, which is kind of crazy. Okay, so the other thing that I do is on Fridays, I post a freebie, freebie stitches 2020, hashtag freebie stitches 2020. Um, and on that hashtag, I post a free to me um, pattern that is either from a designer or a pattern I've never seen before. And it's just a way to, um, to uh, promote the wrong word, but to, uh, showcase designers free patterns that they design for us um, whether it's like a free chart that they're adding to a chart that they have or they just are randomly like the be, be well and stitch movement hashtag be well and stitch movement where designers created a be well and stitch pattern um, and many designers did, brand new designers, people I've never heard of and established designers, you know? So um, it's kind of nice. And I think that I'm, I'm assuming that designers do that so that you come to see their, their, their work, right? Um, and be interested in what they have and that you'll start buying their patterns. And it's a good way of putting your name out there. And I love me a freebie. That was a long-winded explanation over what freebie stitches is. <laughs> but anyways, so on Fridays on that, on Instagram, under that hashtag freebie stitches 2020, um, I still post a free pattern that I have found. And because Friday is kind of like, I consider Friday evening the start of the weekend. And, um, and so I chose samplers for this month of May because my weekend is sampler weekend. Um, and so you will see samplers for this month. And so the first one I found was by La Di Da and it's called Freebie Alphabet with Hair. And it's super cute. See, floss tube face, you guys, serious. Um, and so I did this on a mystery. Oh, I have floss and my needle in the front. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, and this is what I've gotten done so far. This is going to be a very fast, easy stitch. Now I'm doing this on, 
I believe this is a 16 count Ada mystery Ada. I got this out of from the stash unload and um, no idea what it's called. I am doing this in Princess Floss as Carolyn from Stash Sisters. Stash Sisters calls it, I think. Um, and this is Silk Floss from Silks for You on Etsy. And its color is, I thought it was written on here. I don't, oh, here it is. The color is, goodness, sorry, oh my goodness, PR014. I don't know what that means, but it is a very pretty, it's not a red, it's not a pink, and it's not really a purple. <laughs> It's kind of a, uh, I'm horrible with colors. It's not my forte. It's kind of like a mauve, maybe. Sure. Um, so anyways, that was, that was that one. And then it was a sampler weekend. So I did, oh, and it was May 1st. And May 1st is when my grandma was born. And uh, May 1st, 1922. Yep, 1922. And my grandma was very elegant. She was very sweet. She was very ladylike. And um, she loved delicate ladyish kind of things. I don't know what that means in today's standards, but you know, she was just very elegant. Um, and so I chose Blackbird Designs, The Light Upon the Lawn, because as soon as I saw this pattern, it reminded me of my grandma. And so I am using all the called for colors. They are beautiful. Here. They're gorgeous. And I am doing it on 16 count country French golden needle Ada fabric. And I actually got quite a bit done. Oh, the colors, you guys, are just stunning. So I worked on this for two two days, Saturday and Sunday, over Mother's Day weekend. And the littles, no, it was not Mother's Day weekend, May 1st and 2nd. So I worked on this. And in the center here, you add an initial uh, in the center there. And this one is a B. Yeah, that one's a B. So my grandma's name was Oda, O-D-O-A. And so I'm gonna put an O in there, in the center here, Oop. and um, and continue this. This was, I mean, it's beautiful. And this, Lin this Ada is fantastic. I think I will be buying some more of this because it was, it's lovely to work on. Um, and I did this stitched in hand. Uh, some things I stitch in hand, some things I use a Q-snap for, some things I use a roller frame for. Um, it just depends on the pattern and how I'm feeling. Yeah. Okay, and then we get to Mirabilia Monday. So May 3rd, the week of May 3rd. And my first mirabilia that I chose and I've been buying mirabilias for a very long time like since 2002 I've been buying mirabilias and so I've had this guy in my stash for a very long time he is Archangel by Nora Robert or Nora Corbett who is the designer of mirabilia and she has another line too she just calls Nora Corbett and um she does pixies and all kinds of other things. Um, he's beautiful. And the colors for him are stunning. Like, these are all his colors. Um, I probably am missing a few. And then, of course, I'm missing the Charon and the beads. Um, and I think he also calls for Chronic, which I am really hoping I can do. Yeah, he's got like four Chronics. I'm really hoping I can use Petite Treasure Berry because I consider Krennic Devil Floss. It is horrible. Horrible. My personal opinion. Um, now, I am doing him. Where is he? Oh, here he is. I am doing him 
on an 18 count. Is this 18 count? Yes, 18 count Ada by Fabrics by LJ. He is no longer a dyer, unfortunately, but I have a lot of his fabrics, which you will see a lot of in the future. But unfortunately, you won't be able to get them. What I've gotten done on him so far, um, I started up in the upper left, as I normally do. And this is part of his angel wing. There are... Uh, I think I've got four colors that I've been working on. There's four colors in there so far. Um, this pattern is not hugely confetti heavy. There are some sections that it is, but it looks, for the most part, there's a lot of block color, which is lovely on this pattern. Uh, so, so far it's been an easy stitch. I put this one in a, my R&R Q snap stand, lap stand, um, and worked on it. I think I'm going to start using doing this one in hand just because it's probably easier. Um, I had a question on my Instagram about Mirabilia's and doing them on Ada. So I am mostly an Ada stitcher. Um, I struggle on even weave and linen. And so it is not my preferred go-to. Um, and for a very long time, because these patterns do call for, most of them call for a linen and they'll give you maybe two versions of a linen. Um, a few of the patterns will give you an Ada conversion. And, but I belong to a couple of Facebook groups that are Mirabilia based and all of I would say a good majority of the people on there stitch on linen or an even weave or something, um, not an Ada. And they do skin one over one. And so I was uber intimidated because I was like, well, I'm, I'm not gonna do skin over, one over one, so are my Mirabilia is gonna look bad because their faces are not going to look as dainty. Their skin's not gonna look as dainty as it looks on a linen. And, um, so I talked to my, uh, local needle workshops owner and I said, I am struggling because I have all these patterns and I want to do them. And she said, why can't you do them on Ada? And I said, well, because it, and she says, you know what? A lot of these patterns are, they call for two over two. So even though people might be doing one over one for skin, the pattern's actually called for two over two, and that's no different than doing it on Ada. So I'm like, okay. So for those of you who may be reluctant to work on your um, Mirabilia's on an Ada, don't be, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and it will look beautiful, it will look beautiful. So that is Mr. Archangel, my beautiful Archangel. And I cannot wait to get back to him. He is beautiful and I think he's gonna look absolutely stunning on this fabric. I'm glad that I went with this. Track. Okay, and then it gets to Freebie Stitches 2020 Friday again. And so I found this pattern. It's called Petite Sampler Rose. And the art, the designer is Paola Gattenblue. Everything I talk about, I will put down in my links below, um, in the show notes below. Now this one I did choose to do on even weave. I know I just talked about even weave, um, but because it's not huge, I mean, it's, it's a good size, but there's three colors, that's it. And, um, and a lot of the pattern is repeating, so pretty easy. So I decided to do it on an even weave and thought, well, I will try and even weave on a small sampler and see how that works out. So that's what I got done. This took me darn close to all night. One of the reasons why even weave and I will probably not be friends. This took me forever. It took me forever just to get that little bit in. Um, the counting over <laughs> and making sure that I've hit two. So I'm working this two over two. Um, that I'm hitting two over two was hard, you guys, it was hard. So I, I don't know, 
this is this is my test piece. I'm in no hurry to get her done. Okay, and then it was sampler weekend. Oh my gosh, when I first saw this pattern, I it just spoke to me. I don't know why, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, mm, I, I have to have this pattern. So it's called Carter House Sampler 1817, and it's by uh, Cross Stitch Antiques. It is gorgeous. And so I am doing this on a color and cotton 16 count Ada, and it is called A Love Letter. And it was one of the fabric of the month pieces. And I got quite a bit, I mean, for me, done on the weekend. I got quite a bit done. Now this was Mother's Day weekend and uh, the Little's birthday weekend. So for, and I wasn't feeling great. So for that weekend, I actually got quite a bit done. I It's gonna look stunning, stunning on this fabric. I am so happy. Um, it is all done in DMCs, which is also fantastic. And these are my DMC colors. I am missing a few, and so I need to go find those. But I mean, are those colors not beautiful? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So I wasn't able to start the, I wasn't able to do the border because I didn't have that color. <laughs> I'm so jealous of all of you that have your Hobby Lobbies and Joann's and Michael's have opened up. Ours are not opening up until June, possibly. And um, I am, I have a billion flosses, but for some reason, the ones I need, I don't have. I don't know how that happens because I'm fairly convinced that I have bought every floss under the sun. I clearly haven't, or it's in a kit. And I just am too lazy to figure out which one. And I don't do those awesome spreadsheets to say, oh, this is in this kit. That is too much work. That's stitching time. Stitching time. Okay, then it got to Mirabilia Monday. So the little was born on the 9th, but it was sampler weekend. So, and Mirabilia Monday is uh, when I needed to start my Mirabilia. And I am doing this for my granddaughter because her name is Ella. And this is Ella the Frog Princess. And as soon as I saw this chart and I saw her name, I was like, well, of course I have to get this for my babies. So, um, so this is the one that I'm doing. I was tossed up on the fabric because what this one calls for is a 32 French lace, 32 count French lace linen or a 16 count French lace Ada. So see this pattern was done in an Ada conversion. I had a piece of French linen, but it was two inches too short, which bummer. So I had this Fabrics by LJ piece and it was called, is this one called Sandy? Mm, I think that this one might have been called Sandy. What is this called for? Oh, gray. It was called Oh, gray. No, that was the Archangel. Sandy Beach. Sorry. So, and it's got a lot of modeling in it. But, and then my other choice was I was just going to go with a antique white. Um, and I put it on my Instagram and um, I mean, this is kind of the fabric that I was really leaning towards because the French French lace is very, very, very similar to this color. And so I was pretty much leaning to this, but several people commented and said, definitely this one. And I was like, yeah, okay, you guys, you're right. Um, and so that is what I've gotten done on her. Like I said, I was not feeling fantastic this last week, and so I didn't get as much done as I really wanted. But can we not see the face outline on this girl? Yes, we can. And then um, part of this is her hair. She's got a ton of beads in her hair. I don't have the beads. I thought I bought the beads for this one, but I have the beads for Red. I have the beads for Winter Queen. I have the beads for so many other patterns, but not this one. And then these are all the colors to her. I am missing a few. <laughs> and again, a few that um, are actually kind of important.
important in her a drop pattern just a minute um some additional shading that is in her face and in her neck and so I don't have that color <laughs> And um, like, I think it's 931 and 938. I don't have those colors. I don't know why. <sighs> Again, Hobby Lobby needs to open quickly. And then we get to Freebie Friday again, hashtag Freebie Stitches 2020. And I found this, this is part of the hashtag Be Well and Stitch uh, Needlework Press created a pattern which is gorgeous and it says be well and then underneath oh, it says refuse to wilt and um it is charted in dmc's which is lovely i chose a um a piece of ada that i coffee dyed so uh, I watched Priscilla, Priscilla and Chelsea, The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, and I've been watching them since they first started, and they had done a tutorial like a year ago, maybe, maybe a little longer, on how to coffee tea dye your fabrics, and I didn't have any tea, but I had a lot of coffee, so I decided to do that, and I dunked a piece of antique white Ada into there, and this is the color that it came out. Um, this was my very, very, very first test piece. I did not bake it because I was like, ooh, I, I, mm, very small piece, wasn't sure. And, um, and so I did not bake it. So I just sat it in the pot of coffee or the, yeah, it was a pot of coffee and just let it soak, um, for probably a half hour or so and then rinsed it out. And this was the color I got. So this one, I started in the center. Now I kind of went back to my original roots of cross stitch where I always started my patterns in the center. This one, I'm unsure of how much of a border I'm gonna have. This, the pattern, if I made it, it was kind of like a 10 by 10 square. This measures just over nine by nine. So I thought, you know what? Let's start this in the center and then I am safe all the way around for a border. It's going to be a small border. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> so this is what I've gotten done. I just did two small little colors on Friday evening and uh, this was quick, 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 quick. Love that. Super pretty and the colors are gorgeous as well, but I'm missing like three colors. Again, they're probably in a pattern um, or something, but... Again, I'm too lazy to go look. So I just have a list of flosses now that I have to go buy at my additional 40% off. Yep. Okay, and then it was sampler weekend, or it is sampler, I'm in the weekend. I'm in the weekend. So today I get to continue on with this pattern. Um, it is All Joys for Thine by Blackbird Designs. This is beautiful and apparently a very nice, quick, fast stitch. So I am doing this one on a 16 count Ada called Golden Sand by my favorite friend, uh, Fabrics by LJ. Oh my goodness, sorry guys. Um, and this is what I got done yesterday. So on Saturday, that's what I got done. And um, I discovered as I was starting this pattern because, you know, I made all my choices and I pulled a lot of floss, but I had also done a few orders from Acorns and Threads and One Two Three Stitch and a couple other places, as well as my LNS. And I guess I didn't realize that everybody was out of the exact same color and that color was in the border. And I typically start in the upper left and do whatever is there. Most samplers are a border. And I couldn't start. And so I tell you what, you guys. And somebody so sweet offered to send me the two colors that I'm missing off of this. And I, our stitching community is the most generous community ever. Like 
it floors me how generous the stitching community is. And so um, a grateful thank you to the lady who is sending me the two colors, um, which I will talk about in my next floss tube. Okay, did I show you guys the back of this pattern? Oh my word. <laughs> um, anyways, so I had to start without the border and normally when I do the border, then I can count down, right? So I didn't have the border, so I started here. Can I just tell you how many times I had to frog out this section here? Three, I'm not kidding, three. It got so bad that I was like, I don't know if I can pull the floss out again because it's gonna be just shreds. And I'm, I'm, oh my gosh, what is happening? And, um, but I made it, I made it and it looks okay, it looks okay. So, but this was, I mean, I got, I did errands yesterday and all kinds of stuff and I wasn't home. I had a two hour conversation with my mother and um, I still got this much done yesterday. So this is gonna be a nice fast stitch, I think. And I get to work on it again today. So I'm very excited about that. And the colors, other than the two, I'm just missing two, but how beautiful are these colors? Yeah, they're, um, and this one is charted with Weeks and um, Classic Color Works. So, they're they're beautiful they are just beautiful and at one point i was thinking okay well maybe i'll just you know dmc my border and um but you know what i'm using fancy floss for everything else so why 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 just for one one um color do it in the dmc so and when this very lovely lady offered to send them to me i was like i'm not pulling out my dmc <laughs> okay, that is it for whips. I have a lot of whips, you guys, a lot. Okay, so how about we get into haul and some other stuff that I'll talk about. So um, a couple, last week maybe, maybe last week, I had posted on my Instagram that I was making um, thread drops, my thread drops. I put a lot, I mean, I just showed, oh no, that was not. Um, I put the majority of my flosses on floss drops or thread drops. And um, I like mine to be pretty. And um, so I just make my own. I used to do Creative Memories and Stampin' Up! And so I have a boatload of paper and I was gonna donate it all. And then I was like, you know what? Let me pull out some of the colors that I really, really like. And I'm just gonna make thread drops out of those and just make a ton of them as I feel like it and just sit down one day and glue and another day punch and we're all good. And so I had um, I had done that and posted a few of the ones that I did. Now I know that you can buy, you can do this so simply. Um, and just buy gift tags from Amazon. You can get them in like 100, 300, 500, something like that. And um, all you have to do is punch the hole in and then, you know, do your thing. Super easy. They're, you know, plain manila-ish color. Maybe some of them are white. Um, and, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. And they're nice and sturdy and um, will get you to where you go, where you want. Um, I just happen to like the pretties. And, um, and my floss tags are smaller. My thread drops are smaller too. Like that's, that is the size of my thread drop. It is very small. It is very sturdy. And, um, and I can get a skein on here, which is exactly what I want. And I, I just love these. So this was done with a English garden-ish kind of paper. Um, super easy. I have a little tag maker that I use. And all you need to do is punch out your shape. Um, and then I think that this is a, it's either a three quarter or an inch hole. And I don't remember. And then I just do a, uh, punch up here as well and then I hang them on there and then on the back I write my DMC color or if it's a silk or whatever um and so uh I write that on there now people have asked what you do if you want to reuse them and you're done with that color or whatever you know you can just put um 
you know those little stickers, those light little white um, square stickers that you can get, what are they, or dots or whatever, and you can put those on the back cover up, whatever word you had on here, or number you had on the back, and um, and reuse it. There's no reason why you can't reuse it. Um, or if it breaks and you have to do a new one, you know, because there's not a lot of room between here and here. Um, but I have not had an issue pulling my thread from the skein. And so anyways, that's, that's all I do. It's super, super easy paper, two papers, your, your decorative paper and a plain, uh, sturdier cardstock for the back. You're going to glue it however you want to glue it. Some people spray, some people do, uh, just white glue, whatever. Just make sure it's dried enough. Um, I let mine cure. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> and so that's what I do. Um, I used to, people asked, I used to bobbinate back in when I first started um, cross-stitching in, when was Connor born? 1991. Uh, so 1990, when I first started cross-stitching, I used to bobbinate. And so I don't love bobbinating. I had, I've got plastic bobbins and I have uh, the little cardboard bobbins. Um, and then with a Sharpie, I would just put the number on my bobbin. Um, they, after a while, discolor and bleed. Like I actually have a few that the numbers are smudged now. And I think that that's just because of moisture in the air, age, I'm not sure. Um, but so I, I'm going to use what I have in the bobbins first as I go. And then once they're used up, the bobbins are going to go away. I actually have a really good idea for the spare bobbins that I have. Cause I bought a ton of bobbins cause I was bobbinating. Right. So I have packages and packages of plastic bobbins and I'm going to use them for another purpose. I'm kind of excited about it. I think it'll work out. I'm not going to say it yet. Cause I don't know if it'll work out. Okay, let's get into what else did I want to talk about? Let's see here. Um, mom, mom, mom. Okay, let's get into haul. So I received this lovely uh, card, a thank you card from one of the winners, one of my winners um, that received her, her items in the mail. Thank you so much. I love, I love it when people take the time to send a card and do a thank you. I'm not always fantastic about it myself, and I really appreciate it when people do. So, and I should do it. I don't know why I don't. Um, okay, and then let's just get into the haul because there's a lot of it. Um, I had done an order with Be Stitch Me. So, Be Stitch Me Fabrics, she's fantastic. Her name is Brandy, and um, she has a Facebook page and she has a website and she's also on Instagram and she does a floss tube every once in a while as well. So she's got a couple of places where she's at, but she dyes the most incredible fabrics and I did an order with her. And so I basically Instagram messaged her and said, Hey, I am looking for some uber neutral fabrics to do some samplers on my bigger samplers. And this is kind of the colorway that I'm looking at. And so she suggested a couple and I said, heck yes, send those. And so I got them in a 16 and an 18 count late Ada. One is called Beachfront and the other one is Vanilla Latte. So like I said, I got them in a 18 and a six, 16 and an 18 count Ada and they showed up this week. They were in my mailbox. And so that's exciting. So that's, you know, this one is the 16 and then this one is the 18. You see there's a, a difference in the color. They are both the same colorway, but there is a difference in the shading. Um, and I love it. Like I love that it is a little different. So I received those, so thank you Brandy. I was very excited about that. And along with Brandy, I'm also in her Fabric of the Month Club. And I do the 16 count Ada and this month the, the club neutral. She's got two different colorways, neutral and uh, other primary, whatever uh, color. And um, I do neutral. And so this is the one that came for this month and it is called Coffee Club. 
and it's gorgeous. And I love how pretty is this little little envelope that it comes in. I, I get so excited when I see pretties come. Okay, then I am part of Color and Cotton's Fabric of the Month as well as Thread of the Month. And I do those also in a neutral. And so the threads came. And so there's Sand Castle, Brown Sugar, and Chimney Sweep. So those three, let's see a better color. There we go. So those three from the neutral clubs came. And you know, with everybody being shut down and you know, uh, the dyers, um, you know, maybe not having as many people in dying um, because of, you know, social, social distancing and things. I think that these guys, they're doing an incredible job. I mean, I personally um, am not in any hurry <laughs> to, to get any of my stuff because I clearly have a lot to work on. And so for me, um, I'm not in a great hurry to have, um, you know, something coming. And so I don't, for me, I'm not noticing that there is a lull or anything like that. Um, shipping time might be a little longer for some of the orders, but for the most part, I, yeah, I, I not have any problem. Okay. So then two weeks ago, I get a call from Acorns and Threads and Acorns and Threads, sorry guys, uh, Acorns and Threads is a LNS in Oregon. Um, who I go, it is the other LNS that I go to um, a couple of times a year. Uh, and so I had gone there when, um, oh my gosh, what was it called? Uh, when Market, when Market was. And so I had done, you know, a fairly good size pre-order and, um, and so we went and got our items and did some shopping. And I apparently put my name down on a list. And I don't remember doing it, but I mean, that's not any here nor there. But when, but I'm also on a wait list for one of the, um, for one of the get togethers. And so when Acorns and Threads number popped up on my phone, I was like, hello. And she goes, hi, is this Lisa? And I'm like, are you calling me to tell me that I'm off the wait list and I need to make a deposit? And she goes, what wait list? And I'm like, oh, you're not calling me about the wait list. <laughs> it was really funny. And she goes, no, but I am calling you because you've got your name down for the hands-on designs um, releases for the Christmas, the, the Merry and Bright Santa. Oh, what is it called? the Santa, Secret Santa um, designs. And I'm like, oh, I did? And she goes, do you not want them? And I'm like, of course I do. <laughs> I just was surprised. <laughs> Cause A, I don't remember doing that. And B, I really was hoping that you were calling me to get me off the list. Anyway, um, so, so while I was going to have a uh, order coming, I was like, can I order some more things from you? And she's like, of course you can. So I did. So I got the two new patterns from Hands On Design. This one is called Silent Night. How cute is that? And then this one is called <laughs> Merry and Bright. Santa with sunglasses, he's so cute. <laughs> Santa in shades. And then, so I said to her, so Kringles was sold out. And I thought maybe I put my name on that one, but I guess I didn't. Like, uh, my name is Lisa and I have a lot of problems. Um, so I said to her, well, I don't have Kringles from the Little House Needleworks. So I'm gonna need Kringles. So I got that and she said, did you want the thread pack too? And I'm like, well, yes. And then I said, and you know what? Let's just go for broke and also get the fabric. So it's pretty much kitted up. So love this. And um, I don't know when I'm going to get this done, but I just think that this is Little House Needleworks just knocks it out of the park each and every time. I just, 
their patterns are adorbs. I love them. So this one at some point is going to get done. Not this year, maybe not even next year, but it's gonna happen. Okay, what else did I get? Okay, and then I like sulkies. I work with sulkies. I've used sulky threads for a while. And for those who have never heard of sulkies, they are these awesome threads that come on these tubes. They are one, uh, one thread. And so one thread is equal to two DMC. So, or if you loop start, you know, one, one thread loop start, so it's a double. So this is pretty much equal to one double um, DMC uh, thread. And so I like using this. The only issue is, is that you can't loop start. So then you have to, is it called pin stitch? I didn't even know that that was a thing. I just keep my thread on the back if I'm doing one thread and then stitch over it to lock it in place. I guess it's called a pin stitch. I'm not sure, I don't know. Um, these are 12 weight cotton um, spools and there's a ton of colors and they're cheap. You get 50 yards for like $1.69, something like that. So a little goes a long way, you guys. So I went on the Sulky website and I bought me some Sulkies. Yes, I did. And then I had to, of course, get to free shipping because if I'm gonna pay for shipping, which seems ridiculous, I can buy more threads. Um, why would I do that? So uh, I just, I went and I chose like a bunch of um, neutrals and uh, things that I thought would be in samplers. And I've got a couple of freebie samplers that I'm gonna do as well as Hands Across the Sea. Nicola has released uh, quite a few little gems that are PDFs that you can instantly download, which is fantastic because I love her patterns. I've been collecting her patterns too. Um, but you know, they're in booklet form or whatever. And, um, and you get them from your LNS. And, uh, but these little gems while we are down in uh, stay at home status or staycation, staycation. Stay homecation, whatever, whatever I coined it, I, I called it something too. Um, stay homecation, that's it. Um, she did decided to release these little gems and they're gorgeous. And so she's got five of them so far. I think she just released one on Friday. Um, it's beautiful. I have got four of the five. Um, mm -hmm. And so I thought what I would do, she does a conversion for DMC, but they are charted for Swell Delger threads and, um, and another one, which I don't have because I don't work on that count linen. And so I thought, well, I would go and get sulkies and I would try and match up either the DMC to a sulky. Um, and see if I can't convert that way. So I bought those. And then Sharon, uh, the thread empress on Instagram. Her name is Sharon Crescent. And she has a D stash page. And she posted. And I purchased. So uh, some of the patterns that I got was um, this Hands Across the Sea, Sam Flair's Miss Mary Ann Bourne's 1791. How gorgeous is this? And then she had this Blackbird Designs Flea Market Souvenir. Oh, I, like as soon as I saw it, I was like, me, 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 me. And then um, Berry Days at Thistledown Farm by Brenda Gervais. Is this up right? Yeah. This little pattern here. And then Faith of the Heart, also by Brenda Gervais. Super cute. Oh, I love me some houses. And then um, Lucy Beam, Love and Stitches, and Thompson, 1811. Oh, so cute. And I think this one I can easily convert to silky threads. 
sulky threads. Super cute. And then Plum Street, who I love. Have you seen her new patterns? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There's three that she's re releasing for May, June timeframe. And then the Dying to Stitch Retreat piece. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for her to be able to release that in a year to the shops because Oh my goodness, it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Paulette just does the most amazing things. Anyways, I also got this one called Goody Grimwald. <laughs> Love it. And then also I got a piece of, I know, shocking linen. Even, even weave linen. I, I don't even know the difference, you guys. Like, I know somebody's going to school me. It's totally fine. But this was dyed by her in Crescent Color Works colors. And um, did I say Crescent Color Works? I meant Classic Color Work. Mm -hmm. um, so I got this piece of loveliness. And it's kind of like a light blue. It's beautiful. It is really, really pretty. And so um, I thought, well, you know what? At some point, I'm going to become a grown-up and try and figure out how to work on this stuff. One day, I'm going to become a grown-up. I am. So, anyways, uh, super fast shipping. It was awesome. And thank you, Sharon. Okay, last video I posted that I had bought these bags off of Amazon and um and several people asked about these bags and so i will provide the link below to the amazon page where i got them you get 10 bags for i want to say i paid 16 dollars. the pl price fluctuates as everything does on amazon um, but what I like about these bags is, is that there's two zippers. So there's the front zipper with this mesh pocket. So this is a mesh pocket. And then there's the top one that you can, and is full size and you can put your stuff in. So as I think I was explaining last time that if you have a pattern, so this is a big size pattern, right? And you can put it in here, but you cannot zip it up. So what I will do is I will take the pattern, I will put it in the top here, the top, and then on the tag here, I will put the name of the the pattern or what I'm working on, on here. And um, so then maybe I will put my flosses or my accessories, my scissors, whatever, in the front and then um, have the pattern here. But if it's a smaller pattern like this one, you can totally put that in the front here. And so then you know when you're going through that this is what holds this bag, what's in this bag, and um, without having to put a tag on it. So personal preference, but I love that, um, that you have that option. So, um, so like I said, I will link these below. These are fantastic bags. I personally like a project bag, fabric pot project bag, but these are great. You know, if you're, if you're got a lot of whips, which I currently do and, but speaking of bags, so I belong to a couple of bag of the month clubs. And so let's show those first. So I am part of the Garon Toten bags. They are on Facebook and Instagram. And they also have a floss too uh, called Sunshine Stitchers. Oh, I keep dropping things. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, and so this was the, <laughs> put it upside. This was the bag of the month. Is this not super, super gorgeous? Yeah, it is. There are dragonflies. Happens to be my favorite. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful bag. And it is a uh, Velcro closure, closure, but look at the inside fabric. More dragonflies. Mama likes. I like. So, um, and then I also, and part of the Grime Guard, and so the Grime Guard matches the bag. So, and it's an eight by eight Grime Guard. Um, I like that size the best because it's easier to handle if I'm going to 
just keep it in my hand or it will fit on my frame fairly easily. And then in April, so uh, I haven't read all the rules, so I can't be quoted on this. So uh, in every month for people's birthdays, they, you know, do a, a happy birthday and then they put your number, a number next to you. And so that is where you are in the list, I guess, for a drawing of for that month. And, or maybe it's for the bag of the month drawing. I don't know. I, I wasn't, I, again, I don't read rules because I just purchase. I just say, me please, sign me up, do whatever. And then, yeah. But anyways, I won. I won for that month. And so this was the bag that came and how appropriate money dollar dollar bills y'all and um so i got this bag now uh the size of this these bags are 12 by 18 i believe so my 11 by 17 q snap will fit snugly in one of these bags um but i am able to get it in there the 8 by 8 obviously fits really well along with my floss and fabric and whatever and i am telling you guys I don't know if they wash their fabrics in something or their house just smells like, you know, how houses have a smell, you know, if you do like whatever. Um, and, but the smell of these bags, like as soon as I open them, I'm like, oh, I love, I love. So anyways, those two bags came. So thank you, Gary and Ronnie. Love, love, love. And then yesterday, I received my So Much To Love bag. Uh, I've been a part of their Bag of the Month Club for, I think I'm coming up to a year. I have quite a few of her bags, they're beautiful. And so this is this month's bag. How gorgeous is this? And this is the back fabric. I think that this is the first time that I've seen a fabric on the back that does not match the front. Um, typically they, you know, match the front and then she's got an inside, the inside fabric. So this is just gorgeous. Like I, I'm in love, 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 love. So pretty. And her sewing's impeccable. Like <laughs> the, the quality, the quality of these bags is just incredible. So Karen, so much to love. Um, bag of the month and when you are part of the bag of the month club she has an Etsy shop and you can just buy her bags but if you belong to the pattern bag of the month club you receive this cute bag inside your folded bag and it comes with goodies and this month she puts in a stash tee and then she does a nice little write-up of things and then she gives a list of what's included in the bag of the month and this month it is the stash tee like I showed uh Riley Br Blake embroidery scissors and a polka dot scissor cover how cute are those these are so cute and then a pattern a pattern by Lindy Stitches called Mermaid's May Pin Book how stinking cute is this? So this is a pattern that um, Lindy Stitches designed for So Much To Love. And so you will only get this pattern, I think, if uh, you are part of the Bag of the Month Club from So Much To Love. So thank you, Karen. Adorable bag as always. And awesome, awesome little goodies. Okay, so the next I love, love, Denise of Dot Dot Goose Design. And uh, she is a, she has an Etsy page. And she also posts on Instagram when she's posting, like saying that she's not got new things in her shop. And so she had posted one day um, that she had these new bags in her shop. And they were not, um uh seasonally themed and so I was like oh I need some you know neutral bags for like my samplers and um because not necessarily that I have to have my bags match my project because 
90% of the time that's not going to happen unless it's like Christmas or Halloween themed. But having something that is, you know, a little bit more neutral to put samplers in. So when she posted this, I was like, need to go have a look, see? And I bought two right away. And the first one was, I think she called this flowers and butterflies. I think maybe, um, but her bags have the clear plastic front and this lovely zipper and this nice little fabric zipper pull. And um, the inside fabric is different than the outside. So here's the outside. And then the inside is this pretty, pretty floral um, ribbony design. So super cute. So I thought, well, that's perfect for a sampler. And then the second one was this flower one. I love the pattern. So that's the inside and there's the back. Super pretty. And um, so the quality, you guys, like the quality is just incredible. They're, her stuff is just gorgeous. And so then after I had purchased those and, you know, um, they were being made and, and I was waiting and no big deal. And then she posts that she's got this wicked witch fabric for Halloween bags. And I'm like, what? And she goes limited supply. So I'm like, well, get on on there. And so bam. Oh my good night nurse. How cute is this? So loving love, love, love. And then this is the back, super cute. And so um, they were being made and they just came yesterday. I just got them, I got a, a message in my email saying, your order has arrived from Dot Dot Goose Design. And I'm like, <laughs> yay. And so I scrambled my happy self to my mailbox and got these, tore this open. And in the meantime, she had, uh, messaged me and said, you know, your stuff has been shipped. You are one of the first to receive one of these bags. And I'm like, <laughs> so excited. So, um, love this. And I said to her, well, I kind of regret that I didn't buy two of them, not having seen it yet, you know, just a, on a picture on, on Instagram or, uh, Etsy. And I was like, oh, I should probably have bought two of these bags are really cute. And she goes, no, not to worry. I bought more, uh, fabric. And I'm like, so chances are I'm going to have to, you know, get me another one. So super cute. And again, like I said, super good quality. And right now she is doing free shipping um, because of, you know, coronavirus. And um, which is really, really generous of her. And her bags are reasonably priced. And again, like I said, super good quality. So that's it from a haul, you guys, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's do giveaways. So for my 500 subscriber giveaway, I had this bag and I have not heard from, it was Sister Stitcher and I have not heard from Sister Stitcher yet. So if you are a Sister Stitcher, get a hold of me via, um, you know, message me on Instagram, cross by floss, or um, my information is down below my email, and you can get a hold of me that way. Um, next week will be my regular video again, back on my two week cycle. And um, if I don't hear from Sister Stitcher, I will draw again. So, and then last, last video, I had three patterns that I was doing a pass on. And so the first one was where there is life, there is hope. And um, it is the needlework. It is the pattern that is done by mother daughter um, from Little House Needleworks and Country God Country Cottage Needleworks. Every time I get this mixed up. Um, because I ended up with two of them. And so I chose by random uh, comment picker, I chose the winner and it is Karen Malali. Malali, um, congratulations, you received this pattern. So get a hold of me. Again, my information is down below and I will get that in the mail to you. 
Um, the next one that I had was this Waxing Moon Design uh, Pumpkin Jack and Friends, and the word was pumpkin. And the winner of this is Cynthia Fuller. So congratulations, Cynthia. And then this Glendon Place, uh, A Ghostly Gathering. And the word for this one was ghost and crystal cross-stitcher. Crystal cross-stitcher. You won this pattern. So if you all would get a hold of me, I, my Instagram or my um yahoo my yahoo email and uh, i will get those out to you all right so to celebrate the ending of uh, my halloween um birthday month starts i am doing a pass the stash of my a pattern that i just absolutely loved and i have noticed that a few people are doing this pattern including priscilla of uh the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch and Laura Stitching by the Shore. Stitching, yeah, Stitching by the Shore. Um, she finished hers as well. So, this pattern is a uh, country garden samplings and it's called Halloween Sampler. It's been used, it's been well loved. I work out of my, I work from patterns. I very rarely make a working copy. And um, so it's been, you know, open several times. I don't mark my patterns, but it's been open several times. And so the, um, you know, it's got some wear uh, on the, on the creases, but it is in great usable shape. And so if you are interested in this pattern, it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. If you are interested in this pattern, let's say Halloween. Halloween. Okay. And then another past my stash, uh, I am not going to do is this little artist kiss kit, um, umbrellas. It comes fully kitted up. It's got Zweigart, uh, Ada in it. And it's got the flosses and a needle and the pattern. And so if you are interested in this, let's say umbrella. Need one today because it's gross. And then um, I, I've just been going through all of my, my stuff. And um, I, you know, randomly buy things because I'm like, oh, that looks like a good idea and I'll do that. Or I, you know, some pattern grabs my attention or something. And so I had bought this book, Hold That Thought Bookmarks by Sandy Orton, Leisure, Leisure Arts book. And there are 37 patterns in here. There's some super cute ones. Like, look at those. Oh, they're so cute. There are some very, very cute patterns in here. Um, brand new, brand new book. I mean, I have probably stitched two, two of them out of here, but super cute. So if you are interested in this, let's say bookmark. And um, I will pass that along to you. So what else have I got, you guys? Who did I forget to mention? Um, floss tags, acorns call. Ooh, I am so close to a thousand subscribers. I seriously think to each and every one of you um, who subscribe, watch, pay attention, go through this whole entire long floss tube, which I do try to make them short. They never end up short. I do try. Um, but I am getting up to a thousand. So when I hit a thousand subscribers, I am going to do another nice big giveaway. And, um, Oh, and then, oh, good Lord. Maybe I should try this again. So for the passing the stash, um, please don't mention giveaway. Please be 18. You guys know all the rules. Um, yeah, but when I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do a nice big giveaway and I have, I have a couple of really cool ideas. And so, um, when I get there, so I really want to thank you all for, um, you know, watching and, uh, recommending me and, um, it's really awesome. So I am going to, uh, put out two new floss tubers that I have watched in the last couple of weeks. Um, let me get up close here. Uh, one is called uh, MBC Stitcher, and his name is Matt. He is from Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
Um, he does long videos as well. He has got some awesome whips. Uh, he has got, I mean, the projects that he is working on are just absolutely lovely. And he's got the cutest dog, Augustine, Augustine, Augustus, Augie. I think he calls him Augie. It's been a couple of weeks since I've watched. Um, I, I binge watched all of his, I think he had four and I watched all of, all of his videos. Um, he's got great whips, go check him out. He is lovely stitching, lovely. And then um, the other one is Monica Stitches. Again, I will have them linked below. Um, she is a brand new floss tuber. And uh, she, what I, she was showing all of her whips and she does one over one on 28 count or 32 count. 28 count even weave I think and she did the Halloween rules by Lizzie Kate on one over one and it turned out to be like the best size ever and I was like I love that idea like I would never have thought you know skin one over one the words one over one sure but um the whole pattern one over one I was like game changer game changer if I don't have to count two over two and I can do one over one and have a big pattern and it not be huge I'm gonna try that so thank you Monica because um not only was her video she's got beautiful whips and finishes and um and short videos <laughs> I aspire one day it'll happen um, but anyways, okay, so I think, I think that that's it. I did a lot of blabbing, but it was three weeks worth. So, and next week I will be back on regular scheduling. I will show you whatever progress I made on, um, my all joys for thine pattern. And then it starts Mirabilia Monday, except that this week's a little different. So I have a uh, Mirabilia Alice that I'm going to do, but only one day. And then um, I'm going to be working on my Heaven and Earth Designs pattern and Boleyn because uh, there's a whole reason. And I'll tell you about that in my next video. So thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.